morning guys oh my god my hair is crazy this is my first time waking up at 5 30 since i've been back and i'm struggling i'm finding it really hard however we're gonna crack on and we're gonna do an amazing workout because this is the best time of day to get my exercise in ah <sighs> waking up at 5 30 is not nice it's never fun however when that's what you've got to do in order to make progress and move forwards then it is worth it definitely and when you build it up as a habit it doesn't seem too bad but i'm out of the habit and so it feels bad okay let's do it so although my knee is giving me grief um i'm not gonna let that stop me from moving forwards in exercise and what i am doing is um so i was doing the 12 week heather robertson challenge um but i'm taking the same principles that she uses for every single day so she does push then she does leg and glutes and stuff and then she does a pull workout and then she does abs and stuff and then she does like a hit workout so i'm trying to take those same principles and try and find myself knee friendly exercises on youtube that adhere to all of those so today is wednesday so it's more of a pull workout so i'm going to see if i can find a knee friendly pull workout because although heather is fantastic she will often do like squats and like lunges and stuff in conjunction with her exercise um so let's go find a knee friendly pull workout So you caught me, I'm out for a run. Um, now, I was sat there feeling really sad for myself after I did my workout, although it was a fantastic workout. I have been dying to go back out for a run again. And the thought of my knee pain was really halting me. And I was like, oh my God, what if I have to wait six to eight weeks for my knee to heal? And then I just get back running and A, what if I don't have the level of dedication and motivation that I do right now and I'm wanting to cultivate as a habit right now? And B, what if my knee just starts hurting again? That is just going to be such a crush and such a pain. So I decided to pull myself together and I started to research. I was having a look at how to get over a runner's knee and all those things. Now, some sites I went on said you need to stop running for a while, but I found this lady on YouTube who went through the exact same thing. Um, and she's a qualified professional. And she was saying how there's a few simple um, things that you can do before and after your workout to reduce the pain and for even the pain to be gone. Um, and I did it and I'm feeling fantastic. I've not had any knee, knee pain at all this entire time. I've been running and it feels amazing. So don't let obstacles get in your way try and figure out a way to move past them and to still get what you want but you might just have to be smart about it you might have to do some research and it might have to be something that you just go through but uh, now I feel confident that I can do that workout every single day before and after my run and I can still go running so I am literally over the moon and it was all a matter of mindset I could have just been oh woe is me but instead I turned it around and I'm like I still want this how can I get this so anyway I'm feeling thrilled. Yay, 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 yay. Please don't give up on what you want because you've hit a roadblock. Find a way to push past it. 45 minute run, <clears throat> zero leg pain. I'm feeling great. It is breakfast time. I am clean and the kitchen is clean, so that's important. Um, so this morning in my meal plan, um, I took a look because I didn't really know what to make for myself. I am having a chickpea frittata. Super excited about it. It's one I forget to have all the time and I absolutely love it. However, I'm, for some reason I'm running low on veggies. I think I've used so many veggies this week, but I managed to pull out some purple cabbage, some carrot and some tomato. Um, I think I also have some Brussels sprouts in the freezer, which I might add in. I'm gonna cook these up first and then I'm gonna put it in with the chickpea mix um, and kind of do that. But in the meantime, I'm snacking on a few little tiny grapes uh, just to keep me going. And I might also have an orange slash an apple too, just for like good preloading stuff, just cause I'm feeling a little snacky. Um, anyway, so let's do it. So I've just got carrots and purple cabbage in here and I'm just gonna add in a bit of sweet corn for a nice bit of sweetness as well. Just a little bit like a Eighth of a cup. And we're just going to go in with a little bit of garlic. Thank you, Romla. Oh, excuse me. So I'm just going to whack this on with some soy sauce for a little bit and let that cook down. I was going to cook the sprouts in with everything, but I thought I'll actually have this on the side because I don't know what it's going to be like in the potato mix. So we need one more garlic in there. Good girl. Yay. Thank you, beautiful. 
I also found some broccoli, which I'm gonna chuck in with the veggies. In the meantime, let's make our frittata mix. So chickpea flour obviously is the way to go. And I'm just gonna add, I think I'm gonna go for like a, a cup. Let's just go for a cup and see, see how we get on. So we got, okay, then we're adding a bunch of spicy things. So I've got some turmeric in here. Oh God, that was quite a lot. I've got some garlic salt, very old onion powder. Going in with some black salt to give me that lovely sulfury flavor as well. And some nutritional yeast as well. There we go. Quick little whisk. Get everything nice and combined. And then we're just gonna add one cup of water. We really don't want it to be any clumps, so try and give it a really uh, vigorous risk. Try and get those muscles going again. Oh my God, it smells amazing. I am so excited about this. I don't know why I always forget about this as an option. So in the meantime, Abe said he wants some chia pudding for breakfast. So we're gonna quickly whip some up for him and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Yep. Right, go in a quarter cup of chia seeds. That's not a lot to me. Oh, now chia seeds fluff up, don't they? It looks really tiny at the beginning, but they get really fluffy. I'm just gonna give it a little mix. Oh, that looks Yes. Oh, and then I'm going to set this aside to thicken up and then I'm going to flavour it afterwards. We're all just having a little quick this Brazil nut. Okay, so I'm just going to use my trusty non-stick plug-in kind of situation. Okay, these veggies are cooked now and I'm just going to stick it in with this mix. Mommy, are you going to have some chickpea frittata? Are we going to share? Yeah. Okay, give it a nice little mix. What are you guys up to? <laughs> Mommy just did this. Oh wow, wow, Rami. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay, then I'm just gonna make them into little kind of well, actually kind of big pancake shapes. <laughs> Using half the mix at a time. Okay, then we just stick the lid on, let this cook. Okay, now this is thickened up a little bit. I'm going to add in some raspberries. So I'm also putting in a splash of maple syrup and a little bit of vanilla as well. Hi guys. Welcome back to another video. All right, give that a little mix and we'll let that sit for a little bit longer. Chia pudding. Up. Yeah, chia pudding. <laughs> so this has been cooking for about five minutes and I'm just going to Flip it over. Boom. There we go. Sorry about the washing machine on in the background, but this is now done. So I've got my Brussels sprouts and some orange on the side. I'm just gonna whack this on as well. I don't think there's actually loads of space. Hold on a second. Oh wow, look at that baby. It's a giant beast. There we go. I'm just gonna make the other one now for Romy or for James maybe. A James, James could use some breakfast probably. Or maybe he could have this for lunch. So Abe is just tucking into his chia pudding. How is it, Abe? Good, fantastic. And romy has got an interesting selection. She's got some oranges, some tomatoes, and some of my Brussels sprouts, which she absolutely loves. And Abe's gonna have some oranges too. So it's like a fresh kind of breakfast with other stuff. I'll just cut this baby in half. Stick that on there. And I'm gonna add some of my tomato on the top as well. Um, and I thought some sauerkraut would go nicely on this too. Here we go, lovely, gigantic feast. I'm very, very excited about this one. And I was thinking, if you wanted to, you could make up a load of this mix, just stick it in the fridge and then just uh, make it fresh every single morning if you wanted to, or you could just make loads of, loads of them in advance, stick them in the fridge or the freezer so you can have them throughout the week. So great one for meal prep as well. If you wanted something saucy, you could obviously go for like some kind of um, ketchup or like hot sauce or something. I'm just gonna kind of keep it plain because that's how I fancy it. Um, or you could also go for some kind of uh, light cashew creamy cheese kind of thing. Let's see what this is like. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That is so good, oh God. Do you want a Brussels sprout? Romy is obsessed with Brussels sprouts and it's beautiful. 
Okay, we're getting ready to go out, so I want to show you how I'm kind of putting lunch together based on yesterday's leftovers. So I've got some scallop potatoes, which I'm mm, I'm in love with. I'm going to put a couple of bits in here for the kids, along with they've got some cucumber and some grapes, and I'm going to do them a little bit of yogurt on the side as well, um, and some dates. So that's going to be their little snack. And then for myself, I'm going to pack a little Tupperware with some salad. Okay, so this is what I've got for the babies. We've got some yogurt, some dates with peanut butter, scallop potatoes, and then fresh stuff. So this is what they're gonna share, um, which I think is a pretty good packed lunch, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze, I've squeezed some salad in here. I don't have a very big Tupperware, and I don't have a lot of space to put a Tupperware. So I'm gonna just squeeze this on top of the salad. And I'm gonna kind of use the cheesiness of the scallop potatoes as the dressing, kind of eat it as one. Um, anyway, that is my strategy. And I'm also gonna bring a couple of apples for extra goodness, because there's not loads of like veggies in there. So that is my plan. Anyway, I've got two very crazy kids and I need to head out the door, so I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm actually gonna take these grapes and snack on these whilst I'm driving there, because I know I haven't got loads of stuff um, in terms of low calorie density goodness with me. Um, so yes, I'm gonna snack on this as a little preload on route. So it's now like four o'clock in the afternoon and we've been out, we've had loads of fun. We had a picnic while we were out as well. So we've been super, super busy and I haven't really filmed it, but we're back now and Romy's woken up. Abe and I were just chilling. We were playing some birdie bingo, which was nice. Abe's had some chocolate ice cream. And I had a little bit as well. Romy and Romy's in the <laughs> Is she snuggling in the blanket? I thought we could have a little dance party to try and just have a little bit of fun and to get some good movement in. And whilst we're doing that, I really wanted to get my arm, my short seven minute arm workout in as well. The Holly Dolk one that I would no, tell you guys about before. Minute. So let's do this quick little arm workout. For those of you at home, if you want to join me in doing this arm workout every single day, then feel free to press pause right now and go and check out this workout. We're gonna do this together. So let's do it. I promise you it's a massive burn at seven minutes. Doesn't take long to do it. You don't need any equipment. Let's go. I have to get some titles. Let's begin. That was amazing. So I've been doing that workout for maybe like a couple of weeks now. And honestly, my arms feel so much stronger than when I started. So if you're wanting to get more movement into your day, it's actually super powerful. Obviously focusing on doing some actual exercise is great, but just getting movement in on a day-to-day -day basis is actually even more fantastic. So for example, I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking dinner. I've currently got some cauliflower on and I've got some pasta on. We're having an al cauliflower Alfredo. But whilst I'm in the kitchen, I'm not just standing there kind of making the food like that. I've got music on and I'm actually dancing around my kitchen. So that is a fantastic way to get movement in. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything. It's actually super fun because dancing around is amazing, but I'm getting in loads of extra movement into my day. And if you build that up as a habit, every time you're in the kitchen, firstly, you'll love being in the kitchen. It's so much fun. Uh, but secondly, yeah, great way to get movement in. Anyway, I just wanted to share that if you are doing something and you're finding it a bit boring and you wish you could get movement in, put some music on, dance around. Okay, I've just whipped off this cheesy sauce. This is my cauliflower Alfredo. And honestly, it is like heaven. It's like actual heaven. I did put a few cashews in here because I'm feeling like I want something a little special. Mm. Do you want to have a try? No. Oh, it's so good. How little taste. It's cheesy. Mmm, cheesy sauce. Do you love cheese sauce? Have a little taste. Love it. Ah. Oh, yes. What do you think? Ah. Nice. So, let's just put two and two together, shall we? Now, Ronnie, this is very hot. Okay, just have a look at this. This is low fat, basically made of cauliflower. Oh, my gosh. Heaven, 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 heaven. Now this feels like a super decadent, really luxury, like, it feels like a naughty, high calorie item. You want more legs? Here, 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 here. I'll tell you what, do you want to just eat that? Yeah, you just have that, babes. So yeah, this feels like a super deluxe, high calorie, like super treaty item, but it's made using cauliflower. So see how you can take something that like, you would get really excited about it and make it low calorie density. It's just so incredible that you can do that. 
I mean, if I went out to a restaurant and they gave me that, I'd be like, four, four, what a treat. Obviously, if you want the recipes for anything that I've had today, it's all on my first meal plan. So feel free to go and check it out. I also want to mention that in my first meal plan, I also break down like my steps for losing 60 pounds, like tips and tricks, everything about low calorie density, eating, all that kind of stuff. So if you are just starting out your journey, then feel free to go and check it out because I've got loads of good stuff. And it just gives you a fantastic baseline for which to make progress. Right now, I have no veggies, really. I don't know how. I've eaten all the veggies that we bought this week and I don't know how that's happened, but I need some veggies. So what I might do is um, Abe and I are going to go for a little run because he really wanted to go for a run yesterday um, and I promised him we could do that today. Uh, so I'm going to take Abe for a run and we might just run down to Tesco, buy some veggies and then run back. So A, great way to get movement in and B, great way to get some veggies and great way to spend some time with Abe. So it's a fantastic all round. It ticks all the boxes. So we're going to go and do that now um, and I'll let you know what I managed to pick up. I'm feeling mushrooms and I'm feeling courgettes. And I might just saute that and like mix it into the pasta. That's kind of where I'm at. So, so Abe and I just got back from our lovely run. We kind of ran there and we did a little walk back. So let me show you briefly what I've got because I just picked up a few little bits. All fresh goodness. So in no particular order, we've got cherry tomatoes, raspberries. I've got some discounted cotton candy grapes, which I really want to put in the freezer and have as like a special ice cream kind of treat. Um, like for breakfast or something. I've got some blackberries, those are Abe's choice. Courgettes. I've got some mushrooms, which I'm going to use now. Some more courgettes, because you guys know I love courgettes. I've got some green beans. I've also got another bag of frozen cauliflower because I'm totally out of frozen cauliflower and I need that for ice cream. Um, I've got another cucumber because we go through cucumbers so fast. And I've got two bags of kale. Abe was swinging this kale around and he chucked it all over the floor on route back. But not much fell out, so we're all right. Okay, let me show you what I've got going on here. So in here, I've got a lot, a lot of veggies. So I've got my full thing of mushrooms. I've got my full bag of green beans. I've got a full bag of kale. And I've got a courgette as well. And what did I put in here? I put some, most important thing was this liquid smoke, which is going to make everything taste like bacony. Um, and I've got some smoked paprika, some garlic salt, and some onion powder, and a little splash of soy sauce. I'm just mixing that down and letting it kind of wilt away for like five to ten minutes. And then I'm going to add it in to my pasta. And I'll show you how much pasta I'm having. Probably like two cups or something like that but this is going to be a gigantic feast and i was thinking i might even put some baby plum tomatoes in there as well so uh, it's going to be super veggie heavy and remember the sauce is already made of veggie so it's perfect okay so this is my gigantic creamy pastory feast for maximum weight loss with all the veggies tastes super smoky and incredible i've garnished it with some cherry tomatoes How does that taste so, so good when it is mostly vegetables? When I hear people saying they don't like veggies, I think it's because you're not doing it right. Anyway, I'm going to go enjoy this and I will chat to you guys tomorrow. I'm absolutely stuffed and I cannot eat another bite. That is the power of veggies. Um, yes, no more food for me this evening. I really tried to focus on listening to my hunger fullness cues, although when I was sitting at the table, it was mayhem. James and Abel playing basketball. Roman was on my knees squiggling around and it felt like a very unrelaxed environment in order to be eating. So I realised that that could cause me to lose concentration and just eat the entire thing. So I was really trying to properly dive into my hunger fullness cues properly and I realised I don't need any more. Anyway, just thought I'd share that before I go.